Broadway is getting some HBO drama star power this season. Yesterday, news broke that The Sopranos and the White Lotus actor Michael Imperioli will be making his Broadway debut, joining Succession's Jeremy Strong in the latest revival of the Ibsen play An Enemy of the People. The story follows a doctor who sounds the alarm about a health emergency in his town, only to have the very people he's trying to save turn against him. The play is set to open on March 18th at the Circle in the Square Theater in New York City for a limited engagement. So tickets, you're going to have to get them soon. They went on sale this morning. Joining us now, Emmy Award-winning actor Jeremy Strong. Jeremy, oh my God, obsessed with you in succession. I can't tell if I love, hate, or feel that your character was pathetic. Uh, Tony nominated Thanks, playwright Amy Herzog and Tony winning director Sam Gold. Great to have you all on. Can't wait to hear about this. Amy, I'd love to start with you because you adapted this Ibsen script. It, it's been adapted a few times before. What's different this time? Um, it has been adapted a bunch of times before. One of my favorite adaptations is actually the movie Jaws, which is an adaptation of An Enemy of the People, which is a, a little known um, fun fact. Mm. Um, what makes it different this time, I'd say, is um, just how relevant and present um, it all feels. And so we're trying to strip it back, keep it really simple, and keep the focus on the actors and the words, and um, tell a story that's um, that's always relevant, but maybe especially so right now. So, Jeremy, you're one of the actors mm. to be focused upon. I won't try to recreate Mika's introduction uh, just now, but why? Uh, <laughs> what, what drew you to this particular project? Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's a play written in 1882. Is that, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, but in so many ways, it's forecasted the political, social, ecological crises that that we face now. And the play really touches on the third rail of so many things that we're that we're experiencing uh, in our society and in, and in our world. Um, a man discovers that the water source of the town's health spa is essentially poisonous, and um, and it becomes about uh, trying to confront the powers that be who have an interest in protecting uh, the, the economy uh, and choose instead to allow the town to be poisoned uh, uh, to protect the uh, status quo. So I think, you know, it's a play about so many things, climate activism, political extremism, uh, uh, the court of public opinion, I mean, you, you name it. Seemingly ripped from the headlines, uh, Sam. So th is that timelessness, or should I say the timeliness of it? Does that draw you to it as well? Yeah, it's like a little allegory from a long time ago that can teach us a lot about our current moment. It, it, um, Ibsen was ahead of his time about a lot of things, and in this play, he spoke some things that I feel like a contemporary audience could really get a lot out of hearing, but really when you ask like what drew me to it, what drew me to it was thinking about Jeremy playing this character. I reread the play last year and I knew, you know, I knew he was finishing up his job on on succession and I, and I was like I got to I got to send this play to him because it's a part he would really really bring alive. So it was the confluence of the the right actor for the right role in a moment that felt like it could really use this play. You know, Amy, uh, I read the Ibsen play when I was in high school. That's 97 years ago now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it seems to me, despite all the descriptions from Jeremy and uh, Jonathan and Sam about the play, isn't it at the end of the day just about truth? You get punished for telling the truth. That's and it's a sort of version of Trumpism today. Uh, fake news, you know, it's fake news that Jeremy is p pushing out there as, a, as the doctor in the town. Isn't that the core <laughs> of the play? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, it becomes a battle over the truth and what truth is. And Trumpism also, you know, what we've just been through with COVID, where there's just this 
this countrywide battle over what the basic facts were um, that became so politicized that it became impossible to um, to sort of um, engage with any narrative without feeling the kind of tribalism and the politics around it. Um, we lost track of what it, what truth could even be. And this is a story of, of one man who's really trying to hold that line um, and remain, you know, maintain a direct relationship with the truth, which I think is something that's, that's so difficult for people to do today. Uh, it, it, it's a play that examines sort of what is truth without power and what is power without truth. Uh, I think in 2017, uh, uh, Trump used the term enemy of the people, t tweeting it about the fake news media, yeah. uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, the failing New York Times and, and CNN. And it was the first time a, 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 a leader had invoked that phrase, which has uh, a lot of very heavy historical uh, connotations, um, but it but it certainly goes right into that examination of of truth and and the sort of mirror world that we find ourselves in, where truth is inverted and where the existence mm. of ob objective truth is uh, uh, suddenly um, in question. Mm. Yeah. So timely, an enemy of the people opens March 18th at Broadway's Circle in the Square Theater. Tickets are on sale now. Jeremy Strong, Amy Herzog, and Sam Gold, thank you all so very much for coming in. I know this is early for you all. We appreciate it. And